Welcome to Brunswick Beat. Brunswick County's only television news show brought to you by the Brunswick Beacon. I'm Rachel Johnson. And I'm Stacey Manning. Many people want to know what the economic and real estate markets will be like in 2012. Armed with statistics from the last few years, Margaret Rudd Bishop, 2012 Brunswick County Association of Realtors President, and Richard Burge, Shalote Realtor with Century 21 Hometown Realty, shed some light on recent activity within the local real estate market. Both believe local real estate prices have reached the lowest, and stats from 2010 and 2011 show this may be true. Bishop thinks the market will move forward this year. Relying on January numbers, Burge said this January is already better than January in 2011, and it's definitely better than 2010. Find out more about real estate projections in this week's Beacon. On Wednesday morning, Superior Court Judge Jack Hooks denied Commissioner Charles Warren's request for an injunction to prevent commissioners from moving forward with a hearing to remove him from the DSS board. Hooks heard arguments from Brunswick County Attorney Huey Marshall and Warren's attorney Gary Shipman for about an hour on Monday afternoon. Warren was also seeking payment of his attorney's fees. A hearing to remove Warren from the DSS board was originally scheduled for January 17th. Commissioners had indicated they would move forward with the hearing as soon as they were legally allowed to do so. The next commissioner's meeting is 6.30 p.m. February 6th. Brunswick County commissioners have fired him. He's currently involved in litigation against the county representing Warren in a legal battle against county commissioners. He continues to bill the county for work he did after his contract was terminated. And on Tuesday afternoon, three of five DSS board members voted to hire him again. Well, he's representing the report right now, and I'll take the report stuff finished. So I don't, I can't see bringing him in here when there's the other, another issue he's trying to resolve at this time. Yeah, Huey Marshall, he's representing the commission, so what's the difference? Look, no, uh, there's a motion. I mean, you want to speak, you can go ahead and speak. Once you're finished, I'll listen, and then from there we'll call Well, I just think it's conflict of interest. Thank you. Any? Attorney Gary Shipman previously served as the DSS board's attorney, but commissioners fired him last January. At the request of Warren, Shipman continued to work. Shipman continues to bill the county. At the last county commissioner's meeting, Warren made a motion to hire Shipman as the board's attorney. His motion failed with the other four commissioners opposing the measure. Warren and fellow DSS board members Tina Jackson and Bernice Hewitt voted to hire Shipman anyway. DSS board members Pat Sykes and David Grimes voted no. The State Department of Public Instruction has released report cards for school districts and individual schools for the 2010-2011 school year. The school district's average student population is higher than the state average in elementary and high schools. The district's school attendance average is 94% at elementary, middle, and high school levels, just shy of the statewide average of 95% at all three levels. Brunswick County School District made 46 of 57 adequate yearly progress targets. 33% of elementary schools made adequate year progress, 75% of high schools made adequate yearly progress, and no middle schools made adequate yearly progress. To see if your child's school made the grade, pick up this week's Beacon. A major economic development announcement is expected within the next few weeks. Brunswick County is one of three possible sites an industry is considering for potential operation. Jim Bradshaw, the county's economic development director, didn't offer many details but said there was a meeting Monday with industry representatives. Bradshaw declined to comment if North Carolina Governor Bev Perdue was on the visit, although several regional media outlets reported she was in the area this week. The area visited is in the Industrial Corridor in northern Brunswick County near US 7476. There are several industrial parks in that area. Justices with the state Supreme Court have sided with District Attorney John David and his right to conduct traffic court. On January 10th, North Carolina Supreme Court justices heard arguments about the county's traffic court program, which Chief District Judge Jerry Jolly halted with an administrative order last April. Three of the high court's seven justices were accused, leaving about four to hear arguments about whether Jolly acted within the law when he issued the order to stop David's traffic court program. On January 26th, justices issued an opinion siding with David. A proposed reorganizational plan for Sea Trail Golf Resort and Convention Center cites details about selling assets at the resort. 
The filed plan provides that Sea Trail will begin an active marketing process to sell assets of its resort operations, including golf, restaurants, banquets, and rental program, along with developed and undeveloped real estate. The plan also proposes having Matthew Smith named Sea Trail's chief restructuring officer, who would be tasked with the management of operations until the sale has been completed. Smith would also oversee and manage the marketing and sales process. Charles Darwin called it one of the most wonderful plants in the world. There is only one species of the plant that grows in the small corner of the world. It's the Venus flytrap and it's found in the wild only in this region. The Nature Conservancy is working to preserve its natural habitat right here in Brunswick County. Last week, three Shalote residents were charged with poaching the Venus flytrap from the Green Swamp Preserve. Casey Whaley, Joyce Whaley, and Elizabeth Whaley were charged with taking protected plants without written consent from the landowner, which is a Class II misdemeanor. The Nature Conservancy is working to protect the plant and prosecute poachers. Read more in this week's Beacon about this unique plant that calls Brunswick County home. Detectives with the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office are searching for Jessica Danielle Freeman, 30, of Bolivia. Freeman is wanted for obtaining property by false pretense, forgery of instrument, identity theft, financial card fraud, common law forgery, felony larceny, and worthless check. Anyone with information about Freeman or her whereabouts is asked to contact Sergeant John Boldak at the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office at 253-2785. Find all of these stories and much more in this week's Beacon, available on newsstands now. Welcome to the Brunswick Beat Sports Report. This week in West Brunswick High School basketball action, a tenacious team defense for North Brunswick allowed its offense to click as the Scorpions beat West Brunswick 64-54 on January 24th in a big conference and county rivalry game. The victory put North at 5-2 in the conference, just one game out of first place. North also claimed the county title in boys basketball. West dropped to 4-4. Four the West Brunswick girls basketball team rallied in the fourth quarter to beat North Brunswick 48-43. West coach Mark Jones is calling it the team's signature win this year. North had beaten West 67-59 on December 13th. The number three C.J. Wilson Racing Mazda Speed, driven by Chad McCombie and Jason Senai, finished 15th in the ST class in the season-opening Grand Am Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge BMW Performance 200 Friday at Daytona International Speedway. The team qualified 28th and completed all 58 laps at an average speed of 80.977 miles per hour. This is a new series for McCombie, who raced last year in ARCA and won the Bill France Four Crown Award. You can read all these stories and see more great photos in this week's sports section of The Beacon. Scruffy's the tuxedo. Um, they are nine-week-old kittens. Were found on Ocean Isle Beach, and they come to us. At first, they were very skittish. Now they've gotten very friendly. They would hiss at us at first. Mm -hmm. No biting, no scratching. Mm -hmm. Never have had any of that. So they're going to be fixed and ready to go, and they're just as cute as can be. They really are. They don't need to go together, but I'm sure they would love it if they did. Um, just because they're kind of attached. My favorite thing about the two of them is these are kittens with real round heads, mm -hmm. which I think are cute, and they tend to stay looking kittenish their whole lives. Well, they're just doll babies. Do you think they're brothers? We think they are brothers. They're both boys, and we think they're brothers. Um, they were found together, so um, we think they are. 
we've had them housed together since they came in. So now they think they're brothers, even if they didn't think they were brothers before. Oh, well, they're just adorable. And um, so come on down if you think you're interested in adopting Scrappy and Scruffy, because they would love to find good new homes, preferably together. But um, just come down and see. And there's all other cats and kittens here available for adoption. And Cat Tales is open to the public on Wednesdays from 11 to 1. And Saturdays and Sundays from 11 to 3. Okay, thanks, Trish. Uh-huh. Calabash EMS celebrated its 30th anniversary in style last week, unveiling a new Spirit of Calabash. It is not only fitting, but it is with great pride that we dedicate our newest ambulance to the town whose name we have carried for the past 30 years, and also to all those volunteers that have manned it. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the community that are here, I present to you the spirit of Calabash. Come, see come, Calabash 2972. In service. The ambulance will be ready to roll this week. A half gallon of milk cost 30 cents. 29 cents got you a 10-pound bag of potatoes. A can of Maxwell House coffee was 69 cents. And the hometown newspaper, first the Shalote Press before quickly changing its name to the Brunswick Beacon, cost 5 cents. The year was 1962. One of the first headlines to appear in the newspaper was that of a two-year-old boy from Long Beach who died from a suspected aspirin overdose. This week's Beacon features the second of a year-long series reflecting on the history of the paper. Be sure to read this week's story, which remembers the years 1962 through 1966. A day of fellowship and faith dedicated to women is in the works at Seaside United Methodist Church. The fourth annual Women's Day by the Sea is set for Saturday, February 25th at Seaside United Methodist Church. Women of all faiths are invited to attend. Lunch will be provided during the day-long spiritual event. The guest speaker and soloist will be the team of Varel Kidder and Lisa Troyer. The registration fee is $25. You can register online at seasideumc.org or by calling 579-5753. Organizers of an upcoming three-day event hope to bring change to the community. From 7 to 9 p.m. February 6th through 8th in the Odell Williamson Auditorium on the campus of the Brunswick Community College, the Reverend Jonathan Ballard will lead the Damascus Road Revival. The goal of the revival is to take the Word of God out of the church and share it with others. The entire community is invited to attend the free three-day revival. For more information on the Damascus Road Revival, call 330 8080 or visit online at www.damascusroadnc.org. That's all the time we have for tonight, but you can read all these stories and much more in this week's Beacon. If you have comments or suggestions for us at Brunswick Beat, you can email us at brunswickbeat at brunswickbeacon.com. And don't forget to follow the Beacon on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for Brunswick Beacon. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to tune in next week for a brand new edition of the Brunswick Beat, Brunswick County's only television news show. We close out this week's show with more action and images from Las Vegas night.